MLB The Show 24 Early Access drops tomorrow, with the full release being on Tuesday, March 19th. These are my top teams to use for franchise mode on MLB The Show this year. Now, I plan on breaking this up into kind of a couple of categories. We have the rebuilds, and we have the teams that are kind of in the middle. You could go one way or the other with them. They're kind of maybe more like fringe playoff teams. And of course, you know, we have the top contenders. If you're looking for maybe less of a challenge, with you can always go that route. I'm not really, you know, too big into that part of it, but you know, you can go with the Dodgers, maybe the Rangers, Astros, Yankees, Braves, and you might even be able to move some pieces around there to fit how you like it. You know, who are the contenders going to be this year? There's definitely, you know, a few other teams out there as well. But like I said, I'm not going to go into detail about them. Just pointing those teams out. Now, I won't be doing every single team. It's just going to be a little bit too much to do all 30 teams here. And I'm kind of trying to keep this video on the shorter end of things if I can. So just going to get some teams I consider to be in these tiers. As you're watching this video, there will be a poll up here on my channel as well for which team you would like to see me use here for franchise mode this year. This has kind of been one of the things I've kind of started my channel off with with some of these uh, franchises here on MLB The Show. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you check it out. The link is in the description. It'll also be the pinned comment here in the comment section down below. As well, you can also check out the community tab on my channel. It'll be at least one team from each one of the tiers outside of the uh, like you know top contenders. I'm not going to do one of those. So guys are interested go ahead and vote in the poll if you're new here man hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with these mlb the show franchise videos that will be coming out as well all right let's not waste any more of your time and let's get into it now if you're looking for a rebuild i do have three teams you know that i, I know there's a couple teams that a lot of people like to use and one of them is going to be on here but uh i know at least on youtube that a lot of people like doing the a's a lot of people like doing the rockies and the kind of the pittsburgh pirates tend to slip into that category now the pittsburgh pirates is who i'll discuss about here now that's going to be one of my top three for the rebuilds so now last year the pirates they made some improvements they did end up finishing in fourth in the nl central and if i do recall i think they were even in first place at one point at the beginning of the year so that may have been you know around probably there on that april may i don't know how long i know i think they i'm pretty positive they held first place at some point at least they were contending for it we'll see how they fared this year with hopefully for them a healthy o'neill cruz coming back from his fractured fibula that he ended up sliding in the home plate versus the white Sox. seems to be breaking pretty well in spring training right now this year he's absolutely going on he's on a pretty good groove so he's looking to probably carry that into the season as we get to open the days not far away at all so you know, hopefully he's going to find a way to carry that into there. Some other notables for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We have Keith Brian Hayes at third base. Let the team in batting average. We got outfielder Jack Sawinski, their home run leader, and outfield Brian Reynolds, their leader in hits and RBIs a year ago. Some notable transactions that they did make. They ended up signing catcher Yasmani Grandal, and, and they got a closer, although I don't know exactly what role he's going to be in. He might even be more of kind of like a setup or relief pitcher now. A rollers Chapman, they brought him on. Got an extension done for uh, their ace pitcher, Mitch Keller. And it looks like they also brought in Southpaw Marco Gonzalez, the former Mariners and Cardinals pitcher. So, team that could use some work. Got a couple young pieces there, but we'll see how, you know, things end up shaking out for them this year. So, disappointing to see this team is up here now, but it is my Chicago White Sox. It is my favorite team. I can give a little bit more insight into why they kind of fallen into this category over the last couple of years, considering that literally maybe like two, three years ago, the arrow was pointing up. There were people that were predict predicting them to possibly make a World Series, and it has just completely fallen flat on their face. And that's because of bad ownership. Jerry Reinsdorf, their owner, he's gotten way too involved with the team instead of letting his GM just kind of have the control and let them take care of business. And all this happened when they let Ricky Renneria go a couple of years ago. Former GM Rick Hahn, like during his press conference, you could tell that He's pretty much listed everything that A.J. Hinch was, like, you know, what he was looking for in a manager. And that was the Astros manager. He was fresh off that trash can scandal. So, you know, you can kind of see maybe why some people may have kind of wanted to stay away from that. But instead, Jerry Reinsdorf decided to drag in Hall of Famer manager Tony La Russa out of retirement. Because he wanted to make amends for something that happened like 40 years ago when he had to fire him. But to make a long story short, it all blew up in their face. They lost the locker room, and since then, things have just went downhill. They since moved on from some of their star players like Tim Anderson, who seems to kind of be more of a shell of himself, although he definitely has some off-the-field issues going on in his home life. I'm not going to really get into all that personal detail stuff in this video. But 
They also just traded their best young pitcher. And I, yeah, I imagine, yeah, Dylan Cease would be their ace. They just traded him to the Padres. Lucas Giolito fell off. They they dealt him away. Uh, Kopech has not, him and Moncada have never really lived up to the hype, despite, you know, some flashes that they both have shown. But the sale trade hasn't went in their favor. And then Aloy Jimenez just constantly gets hurt. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, he, 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 he walks down the dang street and he ends up hurting himself i mean literally there was a celebration going on like after a walk off or something and he got hurt jumping up and down like I, you, you can't call it only real piece that's really kind of left on the team though is their center fielder Luis robert jr i mean he's easily their best player one of the best players and one of the best young players in the league as well but probably not though he won't be there long either you know Guess we'll see how this one ends up shaking out. Um, he also got first baseman Andrew Vaughn. He could potentially be somebody. Never know. He's got a solid bat, but I don't mean he can he try playing him a little all over the place. But kind of seems like he's more of a first baseman. There weren't really any big offseason moves for the White Sox. They just kind of kind of lost players and they, and they filled the holes with former uh, Kansas City Royal players, which is also where their GM Chris Getz and their manager Pedro Grafal have ties with. Grafal literally came from there, so so yeah. That's the White Sox story. Boy, has this next team really fallen off since their World Series victory over the Houston Astros? The Washington Nationals' last three years have been pretty rough. They've seen 90 plus lost seasons in each of them, including 107 game losses in 2022. And they are in a tough division for sure. It's forefronted by the Braves and the Phillies. But the Mets and Marlins kind of having some mixed seasons in there. You know, they've kind of had some flashes up and down here and there. Both of them have, but. Those two teams also have kind of middled a little bit too, maybe underperformed. Well, the Mets for sure have underperformed, especially with the new ownership uh, and them paying for all these players that they wanted. But uh, they do have some pieces though on the Nationals. First baseman, Joey Meneses. He led the team in batting average and RBIs. He's also tied for first in hits last year. Alfred Elaine Thomas led the team in home runs and he was the other player that was tied for first in hits on the team with uh, Manessas. On the mound, you do have Josiah Gray, a right-handed pitcher who had the best ERA of any of the starters on the team, and Mackenzie Gore, a lefty, who led the team in strikeouts. Now, there are other teams in this category, kind of in that rebuild, you know, if you kind of want them to take a more of a chance. You got the Royals, you have the Angels, who now have lost Shohei Otani. Maybe you want to go with something to, you know, move on from Mike Trout or something like that. We keep Trout. I mean, that team, they got a lot to go with. That was who I used last year. Uh, could potentially throw some teams in like the like the Tigers, maybe the Marlins, the Giants even. I mean, you got a few teams in there that you could possibly throw on this list. And you kind of mix them. I mean, some of these teams maybe can mix and match a little bit too. And even then, those might be a step above or but could, I could also see them maybe like a tier down here as well in the rebuild category. Some of these might be a little bit more on the rise than others, but you know. Next, we're gonna have the teams that are kind of in the middle ground area, you know, the more so French playoff teams. This is probably where I prefer to be the most when I'm doing these series. Uh, not necessarily in a rebuild, but you know, potentially a couple of moves could put you in that playoff race. You have teams like the Cubs, you got the Reds, the Mets, maybe the Guardians and Brewers can slide in here. Um, there's definitely some other teams as well that are probably around this area. But the two teams I'm going to be talking about, first one up, uh, we're going to be talking about the San Diego Padres. Now, this is an interesting team. Uh, you know, just talked about a minute ago, they traded for Dylan Cease. We'll get into that a little later, but it's an interesting team over the last couple of years. They couldn't really get over the hump, you know, despite spending the big money for some of the big market names and whatnot. So they got taken out by the Phillies in 2022. In 2023, it was just kind of more of a middling season. The Dodgers were hot, so the Diamondbacks also made a surprising push, you know. But they were just finished a couple games over 500. But despite trading Juan Soto to the Yankees in the offseason, the team is still kind of loaded with talent. At least they are loaded with names. Like, they have the big names in San Diego. And you're led by Fernando Tatis Jr. Now, the star players that do have the names, though, they are kind of getting up there in age. Manny Machado is 31. He's going on 32 during the season. Xander Bogarts is 31. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, he's 30. You Darvish is 38. When I saw that, I was like, you Darvish is 38? I'm like, I, didn't, I had no clue the dude was as old as he was, man. I was like, wow, that's crazy. It's not a young team with their well-known stars, but they did make a major move here in acquiring Dylan Cease from the White Sox. Now, Cease, his 2023 campaign was a major down one from 2022 where he was a runner-up for the Cy Young. We'll see if the Padres can get him back to that form, so... You know, for him, good luck to Cease and everything. I don't know if it's going to end up working out or not, but I guess we'll have to end up seeing how everything 
bears out for him but padres definitely an interesting team here uh, the red Sox are also an intriguing one a team with some vets and potential young pieces entering the active roster they're led by a third baseman rafael devers who we acquired in the angels franchise last mlb the show and it really helped us get over the top. He was a major contributor to us and allowing us to get to that World Series. Uh, they also have first base in Tristan Cassis, outfitter Masataka Yoshida. There's also a young prospect in Sedan Rafaela, a center fielder, who's been in the majors a little bit over the last three years. He's played in 37 games. I think he's just kind of been, you know, brought up to kind of see what he could do. Um, on the mound, they got Brian Bello. You know, he could be their opening day starter potentially for the Red Sox this year, but it could depend how the rest of his spring goes because right now it's not been the best for him. Um, it also could be potentially maybe a Lucas Giolito because he's done opening day before. So we're going to see if they can resurrect his career because it's definitely has tapered off the last couple years years when he was in um, Chicago. And they also moved off from Alex Verdugo and Chris Sale this past offseason. So some new faces will be taking shape in Boston this year and we'll see how, you know, it all ends up shaking out for these guys in real life. But this is what I have for MLB The Show 24 this year. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I know I didn't go through all 30 teams. I kind of said, you know, I didn't want this video to be too long. But any feedback is appreciated. Let me know if, who I got wrong and what other info I should have added in. If you guys would like to um, know more, let me know your guys' kind of like tier list too. Or who you guys think would be some of the best teams to kind of rebuild with. Or, or you know, whoever's in that fringe area who could be close to making that playoff push there too. But I know there's some other teams that I kind of left out. But like I said, wasn't going through all 30 teams. But as I mentioned earlier, the poll for my franchise is up on who I should use this year. I appreciate you all who decided to check out this new series that we're going to have here on MLB The Show 24. Hoping it will be a good run like the Angels one was. And if you guys decide to go out, you know, hit that vote for me, man. Because I'm excited to see who the potential new team will end up being. But that's going to do it for me here, everybody. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. If y'all enjoyed it, hit the like button. Like I said, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on everything. Hit the subscribe button if you're ready for MLB The Show 24 and you're looking forward to the future of what we have coming here on the channel. And until next time, everybody. Hope you guys stay safe out there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. God bless and peace. Close it out, future. And it's the love from my fans got me still here.